Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of our Tactics series. So, today is the start of a bit of a new series of, I'm going to make tactics of teams that I really enjoy, or I'm excited about, or that are really interesting to me. And I thought we'd start off in one of the best ways possible, is looking at Wilf, Wil, Wilfred Nancy's Columbus Crew's League Winning Tactic. So, I've made it here for you guys, we have a, uh, we have, I did, I did a few tests, so I'm going to show you the, the best one of the lot. Um, but all really successful, all amazing. Underlying numbers are the best. Uh, our first place almost every time. But it's uh, it's an incredible tactic. It fits what we're looking for from this team exceptionally well. And I'm really excited to show you guys about it and talk more about it. We'll show some real-life examples, some in-game examples, how they match up, as well as talk through a little bit how the team did and comparing that to some of the real-world stats as well. So hope you guys are excited. I'm looking forward to doing it. We'll talk about a bit of our tactics normally and all those other things like that soon. But just wanted to give you guys a bit of an intro, talk about the new kind of series. It'll be a bit of a new playlist as well. It'll be in the normal tactics video, but there'll be a special one playlist just for these tactics, which will be mirroring real life teams on top of that too. So hope you guys are excited for it. I know uh, I've been really loved doing the series. Shout out to uh, another player in Shoddy FM, who's amazing. You can find him on Twitch. I'll link him in the description below. He's a Columbus Crew fan. He's found his own and made some of his own tactics as well. We've collaborated on this, so I just want to give him a shout out for that as well. But uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's awesome. Red Bulls fans, I'm a little bummed, but I hate LAFC, so I was so happy they won. And I love Nancy. He's an amazing coach, and uh, he's really just incredible. So, happy to show you guys this. I'm excited to get into it, and uh, let's get started. So, this... this Columbus Crew tactic is crazy. Um, it managed to hit over 100 goals a season in each of the three tests we did, and uh, it, it really fits it well. But I want to quickly talk about some of the things about this system and some other things like that, um, some of the other key things that people do in it, what are some of the most important parts. We'll kind of keep this section a little quicker as normal, and then I'm going to show you some clips from real life and in-game to... Um, show you guys what it's like and uh, how the system works and what we tried to replicate in FM. Obviously I'll talk about the results that we got later in FM, but just show you some clips and stuff to see how it worked and uh, how things came to be. Um, but yeah, let's get, uh, might as well get into it. So the team itself is very possession based and requires, uh, real complementary players that work well together. So high, uh, high core social groups are important. A good, uh, group mentality is really important as well because there's a lot of uh, work between teammates that's really needed. There's a lot of interchange, there's a lot of connection between players that is really important when it comes to this tactic in real life. Now, obviously, in FM, it's not always the same in that sense, but it's just something to me that I feel is really important. So if you do do want to use this tactic, do you want to run stuff like that, I suggest good dynamics in your team, making sure those core soldier groups work together, high teamwork with each other, players have similar mentalities, and I would really focus on doing that because I think that would really make this tactic work a lot better. Now, granted, that's just as good in general, but it's something that I really do suggest, especially with some of the comments from Wilfred Nancy himself, talking about how players how players need to be a part of the system. He wants them to enjoy their football. He wants them to be happy while playing it. And so it's just stuff that is is put forward by the coach, and I think you want to incorporate into the system to really mirror what he's done. Now, the team itself is position based, as I said, and they look to attack from side to side. Now, they do this by aiming to unsettle the defense using quick, long, direct switches and focusing the play through very narrow parts of the pitch. So the team itself will set up at times, let's make sure we go to this, very narrow. So they'll almost look like this. I'll explain why I've just put that guy there shortly. They'll look like this at times. So they'll look like this, almost. Kind of like this. Very clumped over to one side of the pitch. There's a reason this guy's over here. But they'll look very clumped over. They'll take up just like this, this small area of the pitch here. So they'll just kind of go, yeah, we're going to take up like this quadrant. Or even this much of the pitch as well. You'll see them even clumping up this narrow at times on top of that even as well. They're super, super narrow. Like they're, where the two centimeters are almost on top of each other. They'll look almost like this. And this guy will be hanging out over here. So they'll look like that. It's crazy, but they'll look like that at times. So it's just, it's, it's kind of crazy, but, um, <clears throat> a lot of these positions may seem basic, but they, they do tend to be quite varied. Um, 
And so I first want to talk about the way Nagby and Morris play, who are the two center mids, so the two eights in this system. They're really interesting. Now, normally when you see a team playing a 4-3-3, a three, three, <clears throat> you would expect one of the two eights to drop in and almost go, hey, I'm going to help in possession, another guy kind of go forward. It's kind of what we expect. In this system, though, <clears throat> one of them drops out wide to create and take up this space in between, let's get the circle, in between the fullback and the wingback, which are these two guys here. He drops into this space here. Now, this is done to, one, allow for shorter passes to link play, and two, allow for this guy to get in a higher spot on the pitch. He then can kind of, oops, he then can kind of take up more of a position over here. He can be over here. So now it allows them to, 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 instead of having to worry about making, say, this pass here, you now have to make this pass here, which is a lot shorter. So it works a lot more in your favor. And it helps in terms of the buildup and in terms of bringing the defense onto you. But it's one of those interesting things where the two center mids will drift into these positions more than anything else in build up, looking to help adjust uh, the team play. Because as I said, they're going to be very narrow when they play out in these wide areas. So they're not going to be as as stretch, so they tend to be more compact. So this actually really helps them play in these compact areas in these compact ways. Now, I'm just adjusting everything so we can get back to what we're talking about. So that's one of the big thing they do, which um, really helps. Now, when they're in that system there, and they're all really tight together, um, one of the biggest things that it does is with allowing the players to get in a higher position, it also means that the defense is going to come more onto them because you've now attracted more players into these areas because someone who's pressing them in the middle is going to follow them out there, so there's going to be more people. So if we set up again with everyone down on their, their sideline here like we had before, everyone's over here like this. They're all in their cluster little group or whatever you want to, however you want to put it, and all these guys. This guy's over here. Now, what you're hoping is, is that the opposition is pressing a ton over here, and they're really getting aggressive, and they're it's all happening in this kind of area over here. That's what the hope is, right? That's where the play is. This ball is pinging around all around here. So it's all going on around there. Now, what this does is, because it's, it's smaller, it also allows the center backs to now have more time on the ball because they have more options. So when they get the ball, they're able to take their time and go, hey, I can pass to you, I can pass to you, I can go long, and I can go direct. And it gives them more the ability to choose where they want to play because they have no more options because there's so many players around them, which is great. And as I said, it pulls the defense onto them more because there's more people there. So they're going to kind of want to get onto them even more. Now what it does do, plus on top of that, is because with all those people there, they now can hit these long switches. They can switch to this guy who is out in so much space over here. Like, he's in all these acres of space because he's staying wider as an available target to play into. And what this does is now, it completely unsettles the defensive shape, it changes everything, and allows Columbus to then attack from a completely different angle. Now, obviously, it's an isolated angle, but it allows them now to drive forward and carry the ball, and then these strikers and attackers can run, and they all can start running forwards, he tries to start running forwards with the ball. That's another key thing. You want your wingbacks to be good dribblers. They need to be good on the dribble. They need to be able to take people on one-on-one. -on -one. He's gone forwards. Now he can start crossing it. He can take people on. He can combine with, hopefully, a center mid who's tracked with him or even one of the other wingers that's come with him as well. And they can start getting towards this area over here, which is the kind of the key areas these want these wingers and their wingbacks to get into on the edges of the box right there. So that's, <clears throat> that's kind of the big thing when it comes to the playing out of the back. It's so important is that that switch right there that allows them to do that. This is actually done all over the pitch as well for this team. It happens in areas over here, areas over here, areas over here. In essence, anything along this sideline, really from like here to here, is where this happens. That's These are the areas that it happens in, these chunks here and over there. They're the two chunks that play happens in all the time. And it allows for these switches where they can create from those areas. Um, normally, too, what happens is is the switch is played for, played by one of the two wingbacks on the other side. So normally it's played by one of the guys, sorry, the, the, the two wide center backs are normally the ones that play it over um, 
over it being anyone else because they're guys that are usually going to receive it when they're in that clump out wide that have the better chance of them playing it as a switch because they look like they can go inside, but instead they ping it long. Now, uh, when they do those switches, it allows those players to run it, uh, the wingers, strikers, whoever, to run at those guys and uh, really isolate them, making it more of a like transitional moment. So it, it creates it where that Columbus is almost playing in transition. They're playing in a style that is more of a counterattacking one, more of a system that is better for dynamic runners and dribblers because normally they do want to possess, but they also like to do that where it, it changes the way you have to defend them. You have to be able to defend both as a transitional defending team and a possession defensive team, which is very difficult to always go between the two. But that's one of the really interesting things about this style is that it forces the teams to adapt to playing against both systems, which is crazy to think about. But it's really well done in that it forces you to deal with both and, and encourages you to be aggressive and press, but also you have to be conservative enough not to allow these switches to happen and get after you in those then transitional moments because of it. Now, they also will do that even deeper and try to pull you on even more and really go for a transitional moment with balls in behind at times. Now, um, when it comes to scoring goals, as I mentioned, they like to get the ball into these kind of areas over here. These are kind of the key areas they want to get the ball into when they've done those switches and got those guys to dribble. And mainly it's going to be with the guy on the ball, and they're going to have options like the wingers kind of tucking in short these guys towards the top of the box for recycling. And you'll have the wingers kind of in these areas here looking for the cross. So he'll get to the area here of the line. He'll look to normally cross into the nine first, but if not, he'll look for more. So these kind of cut back angles to the two, one of the two wingers where he can cut it back to this winger and they can do something, or he can go far post to this guy who's running in, be it as a crashing head or a cross goal, be it to something here on the edge of the box where he can lay it off, stuff like that. But they'll be these guys here have pretty free roam roles. They tend to roam around these kind of areas here and create opportunities by finding pockets of space for people to do stuff. And on top of that, if there is a cutback played here, these guys are super willing to lay it off to one of these eights who are going to run into the box, take a shot from distance or things like that. And you've seen that happen too with Aiden Morris's first goal. The ball was played along switch. The guy cut it back, got to one of these guys here. It was played into him. He lays it off. Morris runs in. It's around like this spot right here in the box off the layoff. Ah, boom, fires a bottom corner. So it's one of those things where these guys here will create a lot from just kind of moving around and being an open target for this cross from out wide by this fullback here. So that's one of the, that's kind of the key ways I like to attack and I like to do things. And it's just kind of a, a simple way of putting it. I don't want to overdo it too much as this is just, uh, we're, we are playing FM here. So not everything's going to be perfectly, but it's just, it's a quick little run through of kind of the attacking structure of those things. Now we do need to talk about some of the drawbacks of this system and ways that it can't get hurt, which are the issues in transition. So I know, obviously I talked about the morning to play a little more transitional at times, but it can be quite difficult for this team to defend in transition. Now, if you couldn't tell, they're very aggressive. They play very high. And you'll see at times where they're like this pressing. Like, they're, they're like this. There's space here. Like, this space is there. And they're in, their, they're in the opposite half pressing like lunatics. Now, this works because of the way they have all the bodies forward. But if you can then get the ball off them in some of these areas here, like say if they're all pressing like really intense pressing here, really trying to pin a team in, right? If you can target these areas here, or say this area up here, and you can get those balls into those areas, they're in real trouble. They really cannot defend it because they're chasing back with you. So if you can connect, say, one or two passes, you can get the ball from here to here and then out here again, like one, two, you can connect one or two passes through the press. You really have beat them pretty easily. You really only have to take one or two passes through their press to get by them. And it can be really dangerous because those one or two passes can lead to very, very quick chances. Now, it's tough because obviously they're transitional chances. So chances in transition aren't built up as well. They can be more free flowing and they're not always great. So it does allow for kind of franticness in the chances created for the other team. But it also does mean if you play against a team with a very good transition, you can get caught out a lot more easily. And that's one of the things you need to be concerned about when running this is that there's chances for you to be caught out in transition by where by that press being bypassed in only one or two passes. And especially with some of the wide areas, like a long wide, a long switch into the wide areas, 
or one or two quick passes through the lines or maybe a missed tackle that can cause a lot of issues for you in terms of them getting through you and getting into the next uh getting to the other half of the field so those are some things to worry about to think about in terms of how that works in terms of how you can get caught after in uh in the press and the way that stuff goes um Obviously, we're going to talk a little a little bit more about some real life examples. I'll get some clips from uh from real life as well as I'll show you some clips from FM, and we can have some uh, some chats about those as well. And we can show you guys how that stuff works and uh, just how they compared and all that fun stuff as well. So, hope you guys are excited for it. I know I am. I've loved this tactic. I think it's been amazing so far, and I'm excited to show you how the results were as well as some of these clips from real life. So, one of the things I want to talk about, which I mentioned to you guys before, is the eights offering these extra these second or third man runs that are late runners into the box to clean up things offer other options from out wide and that's one of the ones i want to show you in this clip so you'll see what i mean in terms of it watch the movement up number eight here aiden morris he's going to score the goal so i want to show you guys what this is i have a similar example later in fm that i'm going to show you with gressel but that's slightly different but still it's the same idea of that extra that second third man run coming in so watch right here. So you see the movement of the player. So here you see Zellerion, who is the left wing here. He's come over. He's made the run here. He's gone into this space here. Now, Aiden Morris is already making his movement because he sees Zellerion of coming into this vacated space, being that extra player. Oh, boom. Back heel. He's in the space. Boom. Goal. But it's the interchanging of players in those positions, as I was mentioned to you, as I did mention a little bit of... Zellerion is taking up, is they have that, remember how I mentioned, they've, first of all, they have that cluster of players, tons of players in this area, so the short passes work more. Matan has pulled people out of position because they've clustered so heavily in their pressing. There's now space to play in behind. The ball is played in behind to Zellerion, who pulls more people, allowing space for Morris to move into this space and score and finish, which is exactly what we see. Zellerion moves into this space, boom, he pulls one two players these guys are focusing on the guy over there morris is now in acres of space and boom there's a goal this is exactly what i'm talking about and trying to show in terms of that uh obviously i'll show another example of uh of kind of the what they're looking for the cutback the sorry the crosses and stuff as well but just wanted to show that example as it fit really really well in terms of the kind of interchange in that second third man run from the uh the eight in that position so here's the other example I want to show, which is uh, the long switch leading to a goal. So this is just the, the replay of it because the other angle isn't great. Um, and it unfortunately starts here, which kind of sucks. But it's how it goes. So this guy here, Sands, the left wing back, played this long switch out to the right. Um, let me just slow this down a little bit. So he's played this long switch out to the right here. So it comes out to this guy, Farsi, over here. I don't need the sound for the highlights. And it comes up to Farsi over here, who now is the wing back in the opposite side. He's in this space 1v1. He can now take the guy on. He takes him on. He beats him. And now look, he's got the players in the box. Obviously, we have the other guy who's kind of the winger. He's hanging out here for that cutback angle to support. The other players are helping him there. And he's got the two guys in the box, the opposite side of the winger and the striker here. And look, this is what I'm talking about. Those cutbacks, those crosses right at the front there, the low cross there. And boom. Perfectly to Ramirez, who runs in. Farty goes across. He gets in the right opportunity and crosses it back. Boom. Goal. Exactly what I'm talking about in terms of those. Getting it to the line, crossing it in, and getting the goal from it. So that's exactly what we want to talk about in that sense as well for those goals we mentioned. And it's really a perfect example of it. Well, everyone, uh, we were talking about those long switches. And in the MLS Cup Final uh, against LAFC, LA Galaxy in this game, there's the most perfect one that I'm talking about here. So Yeboah brings it to Kucha, and we get it to Rossi here. Now, the team is not as bunched up as that, but as I remember how I talked about how the wingbacks stay really, really wide to give that space and allow for those switches to unsettle the defense. Now look at the defense here. They're all clustered in one, two, three, four, five, six players, all clustered in this central space. Even seven if you want to count that guy over there. But look where Gressel is in all this space over here. Even, and this is Morris, the center mid here. We have Nagby, the center mid, the three strikers. Look at all this space that Gressel's in. So watch this. Rossi sees Gressel, plays it wide. Now look, they're all shifting wide, but guess who's in space? Yaboa is. Now these guys are clustered together. Kucho's got to run in the middle. It's exactly what we're talking about. Gressel gets it. He sees Yaboa's in tons of space. 
The defense is unsettled. They're not in the right spots because we've played quick out wide. Gets it to Yaboa. We've now got runners going into the box. Ball's played by Loeb Cross. Rossi fires home. I mean, it is the perfect example of what we were trying to get, and it is nailed on set. That's exactly the type of goals that we're looking for with this system, and I'm so happy we see it because it's, it's just exactly what I wanted to see there, and it's perfect for the wide ball played wide, the wing back giving us that right width, and that's exactly what we're looking for in those scenarios. So here's another goal I want to talk about. This one is a little more based around um, the interchange of other players uh, switching in and creating opportunities. So Gressel gets the ball wide to Yeboah here. And now, in this scenario, you see the exchange of positions. Nagby comes wide to offer the support Gressel would be, and Gressel makes the run into the space that Nagby is now vacated, which is really good to see the interchange I was talking about. Gressel runs in and fires home. It's similar a little bit to the goal that um, uh, Aiden Morris's first goal against... I can't. I forget remember who's it, but Aiden Morris's first goal earlier this season, where Zella Ryan backheels it from a similar way the balls progress. So it's just one of those things that's really key to show the interchange of players and positions as well in this system, because you see Gressel getting it wide. Now Gressel kind of is back there, but Nagby comes to occupy the space where Gressel would be, and Gressel picks up that same spot and fires home. So it's just showing those interchange of how things work, players connecting and interchanging with each other, which is really all right, everyone, so now that we've talked a little bit about uh, how it works and shown some of the stuff there, the real-life team and things, I want to talk through the simulations. So, in terms of the simulations, I got all the stats here, the other ones. Um, but So this was, the, this was the, one of the simulations we did. Same tactic and everything like that. So in the other two simulations, they got 68 points and 71 points. One, both finished in third place with those points totals. Um, in those, uh, those other ones, they scored 96 goals, 91 goals. And now with this time we had 100 goals, so pretty similar. One time they conceded 41, another time they conceded 38 goals, and this one they conceded 35 goals. So pretty similar in terms of the goals conceded within a pretty variable range. Um, the team in other simulations made the League Cup semis twice. So both those simulations, they're in the League Cup semifinals. This time around, they made the League Cup their own and won it. Uh, the other two ones, they won the U.S. Open Cup one time, and they knocked, got knocked out in the fifth round in another one, and in this one, so you guys can see that there. They also lost in the Eastern Conference Finals in both of those other two simulations. Now, on top of that, the, the Eastern Conference Semifinals is for not people that don't know the MLS, is would be the semifinals of the whole thing. That's the, in essence, the final of the Eastern Conference, and then the winner of that plays in the MLS Cup Final. Now, this time around, they won the, won the Sporters' Shield and won the MLS Cup, which is fantastic. And not what they did in real life. In real life, they did finish third. But in all those two simulations, the team was expected to finish in first place according to the expected points. This time around, they actually did finish first according to the expected points, which is fantastic to see. So it shows you how well it works. And also, there's not much variation between the three. It's going to come down to small little things, give or take here, a shot going this way and shot not going in that way, which is what you're going to expect. And also, the other thing about this tactic is, which I explained earlier on, it's more about doing certain things and doing it a certain way. It's not about winning. It's one of Nancy's biggest things that he says. The winning doesn't matter. It's about playing the, playing the way you want to, playing the right way, making people enjoy playing, having a fun time. And that's the thing that I wanted to care about. This is the tactic. I didn't care about the wins. I didn't care about that stuff. I cared. I wanted to see the team win. But I also wanted to know that this is how he wants to play. And if I mirror the way he plays, I'm happy with it. Because that's what's important. Also, not every FM... Get ta not every real life tactic works in FM. FM and real life are not identical. We can hope so, but it's not always the same. So I'll take it, even if it's not exactly the same thing. But it worked perfectly in terms of what we were looking for. Now, in terms of the the squad stats and stuff, I, this is the most common played lineup as well. This is what the AI chose as the most common played. A little different from how in real life they tend to play, but I just wanted to show you what the most common lineup was. Um, if we look at the goals for the season. Uh, Kucho had the most, which is makes sense, the striker. Then you had the wingers picking up the next most goals, which is very understandable. And then you had the midfielders, Matan played on the left wing, center midfielders, and you also had the wing backs. Now, Gressel is a very attacking wing back compared to Edmundson, who is a center, who is a def more, he's an attacking wing back, but he's more defensive. So that makes sense there. Like you also have Mo Farsi, who didn't score a goal, but he's like Gressel's backup, which would be the more defensive option. As well, I talked about a little bit but what each of them offers in those aspects as well. But in FM, Gressel works better because attack is the best form of defense in FM. Um, 
But you can see the top goal scorers were in terms of that stuff, all these guys getting above five goals, even the center backs picking up a few, as well as the backup striker. Um, if you also do look at the assists, they come from the right side, these guys here. Will Sands is, the, is a backup left back, left wing back as well, so he's picking them up. The center mids, uh, defenders, wing backs, and stuff like that. So you can see it's a lot of the guys behind the play, or the wingers as well, who are going to be feeding those guys in the middle, like the center mids and stuff. So even the striker, I mean, look, there's a lot of assists shared through the team. So it's clear how well they work in terms of assisting each other, connecting the play, and doing all those things like that. It works really, really well, which is what we wanted to see. So I'm really happy with that in terms of it fitting that kind of shared process around all of the MLS, or not around all of those, around all of the players up front, and that real interchanging of play, which is really exceptional. I'm really happy to see. The team did fantastic in that sense, so I'm really, really happy with it. Uh, even if we look at some of the data, they have a lot of, freak, lot of dribbles frequently fouled, lots of passes, accurate passes we don't care about in the air. And they have a lot of crosses, not the most accurate, which is annoying, but they hit some of the things that we really want to see with the team. We look at the average uh, loss of possession. It's high in the opponent's half. It's high amount of shots, high scoring in a central defense, aggressive shooting, aggressive shooting, which is what we want to see. Defensively, few blocks or clearances. We don't love the poor tackling, but we do love to see the defensive efficiency, at least opposition uh, conversion rate and shots per game. Incredibly low for both, which is fantastic. The uh, goalkeeping as well from Schulte being exceptional. Like, I mean, look at the shots face per game. We're under two of the best defenses in the entire league. Uh, even in terms of possession and stuff like that. Possession won per game, possession lost per game. Very minimal amounts for both. So it's pretty good in that sense. But you can just see the, the difference it makes and stuff like that. So it's really it really fit the, the T for this team, and I'm really happy to see how well it worked out. Obviously, this is kind of just a quicker recap because the, the bigger section is before. But I just wanted to show you some of those small things as they are quite po important to this and going to be popular to what you guys want to see in terms of that. Now, for the team itself, we're going to roll through this. So it's a custom tactical template as usual for me. It's on a positive mentality. It is a 3-4-3 system. In goal, you have a sweeper keeper on attack. He has pass it shorter and tackle harder. The right center back is a wide center back on attack with more direct passes, close down more, and tackle harder. Now, I did have someone ask about how you add close down more, so I'm going to show you right here. If you create uh, create any tactic, we'll just say this. When you go to a player here and there's no instruction in terms of the trigger press, what you want to do is you want to click on the player, click edit, then you want to click here, trigger press more often. Boom, that's selected. Because if you go like this and say much more often for the team instruction, it will lock you out of it for the player instruction. So that's just one heads up because I saw someone ask that. But so wide center back on attack, more direct passes, close down more, tackle harder. The rest are default. Same on the left and right side. Same exact thing for the wing back on it, wide center back on attack, both for those two positions. The central player is a ball playing defender on defend. He has pass it shorter, dribble less, and tackle harder. The left wing back and right wing back have the same exact instructions, but they're wing backs on support. They have more direct passes, cross aim at center, dribble more, run wide with ball, stay wider, close down more, and tackle harder. And those are going to be the instructions for both. Same exact thing. Your two center mids, same thing. Going to be the same exact instructions. Um, these guys could be dropped deeper if you want as well, but I found the best success was with this system. I'll show you after this the other tactic I had as well, which I had some success with but i'd say this is the key one this are two center midfielders on support pass it shorter get further forward roam from position stay wider close down more and tackle harder that's the same for both of them inverted wing back inverted wingers on support on either side they're the same cross aim at center shoot more often roam from position sit narrower close down more and tackle harder that's the same for both and finally a pressing forward on attack which is dribble more and shoot more often as I said before, you have a positive mentality. For the uh, in possession, you have you have the ma minimum narrow width. You have shorter passing. You have a standard tempo, which I know not the most meta, but it works really well with this. Low crosses and work ball into the box. In transition, you look to counter press and counter, and you look to roll the ball out to the center backs. If you want, you can also slow down the pace at times. I found that when you did, the team at times could get caught and they wouldn't be able to play through as well, so I didn't have it on. But in real life, the team tends to slow the pace down a lot when the ball is played to the center backs. 
So that you can be a way to slow it down. But I found I got more success with having a lower tempo over having that selected. So up to you, but if you are looking to be more attacking, I suggest go distribute quickly and boost your tempo up a lot. Just a thing that I would suggest doing. Out of possession though, the team presses high line of press. You also have a much higher defensive line with a much more often trigger press, get stuck in and step up more in terms of the defensive line. So that's what we're looking for there because the team looks to compress and press really, really high every single time. So that is the tactic that I thought and figured out was the most successful and the best one for me. There's also a version two tactic, which I will, where is it? Crap, I forgot. It's going to be up here because I, I forget sometimes when I, the way I name things. It was this one, which I also did. It's the same exact thing as the other one. It's just the roles in the center mid center midfield are different. This one I didn't like as much. It didn't give me the same exact feel, the two center mids. I felt it lacked. It was better defensively. It was very lacking in attack. I felt it left too much of a space here at times, and I felt it struggled to really deal with sixes. I, I when I was when I tested it, I felt this player here had to you have them cover their six a lot more and do that, which I did feel you probably could help adjust by using this. But for me, this worked a lot better in terms of territory, getting forward, passing through the lines as well, because also I felt this could leave these three isolated. You had these kind of back eight players here. And then these random front three guys, this felt a lot more connected. It gave us a lot better passes through the lines and things. For me, which a lot better. And you can kind of see that even here by, come on game. Like see this here. So I mean, the two guys are right here. They're higher up before they were down here when I did it. And I felt it didn't help as much. You can see the triangles out wide. They're so much nicer though. You see what I mean? The lovely middle center back. And then you have the, the triangle here. This triangle here, 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 this triangle, this triangle, this triangle. Like you can see the triangles are so much better with this. So I really like that compared to the other one. But that was, it's exceptional how well the triangles worked. And look at that shape. Come on. That's orgasmic. It's so good. So it's really incredible how well this worked out in terms of the shape and all those things. Just amazing. So I really loved it. Obviously, we talked a little bit about that and we talked about some heat maps and stuff the other bit. But. But yeah, that's that's the tactic for you guys. I hope you guys did enjoy it. And uh, and yeah, it's just, uh, it's come out fantastic. And I couldn't be happier with it. Well, that was a success, wasn't it? I mean, I might as well, uh, might as well give Nancy a run for his money with how well I did. But I hope you guys did enjoy our Columbus Crew tactic video. I know it's a bit different from normal where I made a tactic solely for one team. And you've only really seen me show just one team's success with it and stuff. So... I think for me, it's, a, it's an incredible tactic, and it worked so well with this team. I know I love MLS, and I follow it really heavily, but if there's any other leagues or teams around the world that you guys are interested to have me work on, make tactics about, I know I'm interested in doing one on the new New York Red Bulls manager, as I'm a big fan of New York Red Bulls. Surprise, surprise, behind me, right there, as you guys couldn't see. Um, season six older as well, so it's uh, they're my team, they're my guys, so I might make one on that guy. But if you guys are interested in some more, some more teams or other people like that, please let me know. I know, uh, I think Fernando Diniz is another one as well. Maybe even Hirona are some that uh, people have talked about. So we might even do some of those as well. But do let me know what you guys think if you have any more of those ideas. If you do want to see more of that stuff, do put it in the comments below. And if you want to even just get notified, hit the notification bell. And remember to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the future content coming out tactic-wise or otherwise on this channel. We have saves going on, community challenges happening as well. So you, there's so much stuff you don't want to miss out on. But everyone, once again, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you guys next week with more tactic videos for you guys.